This episode is brought to you by Onnit. You know when you're so into what you're doing that you can't think about anything else? Feel that kind of focus every day with Alpha Brain. Its clinically studied nootropic ingredients support memory, mental speed, and flow state, that in the zone feeling. Alpha Brain is available as capsules, powder, or a ready to drink shot. And for extreme situations, there's Alpha Brain Black Label. Use code SPOTIFY to save cash. Learn more at onnit.com. Welcome in. Outkick the show. I hope all of you are having a fantastic Friday right off the top. I don't know if she'll watch or listen to this. Sometimes she does. Uh, Happy birthday to my wife, Laura. Uh, We've got a wild night planned of eating some Italian food and watching Stranger Things for the finale, the final episode. Pretty pumped about it. I hope all of you are having a great Friday. I hope you are going to have Really fun weekends. I got a new t-shirt. I don't know how well you can see this. I'm str- uh, strutting around here a little bit. It's really simple. It just says, biology is real. I feel like the world has gone so crazy that as one of the foremost proponents of science in all of the media, to me and Dr. Fauci, biology is real. That means when you're born... And the doctor says, it's a boy or it's a girl. The doctor isn't guessing you're actually a boy or a girl. We'll get into this in a little bit. Do you know that's what transgender people are saying now? Transgender activists, some of them, the craziest ones, are saying that the doctor looks at the baby when it's born and sometimes gets the gender wrong. You can choose to change your gender. That's your right when you become an adult. But biology is real. Uh, And I'll talk about that here in a moment. Um, We got a lot to dive into, but I want to start. I didn't mention yesterday the Highland Park Chicago shooting. And I had a bunch of things that I said about it on Clay and Buck, but I wanted to make sure I also said it here. And first of all, We are focused on the Highland Park, Chicago area shooting because it was a mass shooting. But every weekend, people are murdered in greater numbers than what happened in the Highland Park shooting in Chicago. And almost no one pays an ounce of attention to it at all. In fact, if we eliminated every single mass shooting in America, 99% of all murders would still be occurring. That's a stat that stuns a lot of people because it speaks to the way that the vast majority of shootings are occurring, which is usually we do not have random acts of violence that lead to death. Usually shootings are targeted and they are intentional and there are one or two victims as opposed to 7 or 8 or 10 or 15 or 20. So even if we eliminated every mass shooting, we would still have 99% of the murders going on. And even if we change all the gun laws, the gun laws would have done nothing to stop the shooting in Highland Park. And that's why I want to hammer home on the argument that I made earlier on Clay and Buck because you never know who's going to hear this discussion. The kid, and I say kid because he's young, the guy who did the shooting in this case, and I want to repeat again, I don't use mass shooters' names because the data overwhelmingly suggests that one of the primary reasons why people do mass shootings going all the way back to Columbine is because they want to become famous. They crave that infamy. They crave that attention. And so one of the things that people like me and also people like you who are watching or listening to this clip can do to help limit the number of mass shootings that are going on is not make the mass shooters famous. Actually, don't use their names. Don't tell their stories. So I'm not going to do that in terms of the name. But let me just tell you this. No one's talking about the parents in any of these cases. Yet it seems clear to me that based on all of the factors, I watched a couple of the videos of this latest shooter 
on social media. And I am not a psychiatrist. I am not a psychologist. I am not skilled at addressing mental illness. But I watched those clips and I said, this kid has got something severely wrong with him. How in the world did his parents also not see this? And I jotted this down. Police had been called to his house before because he had 16 knives, a dagger, and a sword and had threatened to kill all of his family members. He also had threatened to kill himself. If you are so concerned about one of your children, that you call the police to come to your house. How in the world did the dad in this situation go and sign to make it possible for his son to buy guns? I believe in the Second Amendment. I believe in individual freedom. I do also believe in parental responsibility. If your son is clearly mentally unstable, if he is threatening to kill all of the members of your household and also kill himself, why in the world would you aid and abet his purchase of weapons at all? So many of these stories surrounding the mass shooters, certainly there is major illness involved Why would you ever facilitate someone with mental illness getting a gun if you're a parent? No one is talking about parental responsibility in these cases. And I understand that sometimes these shooters are 18, 19, 20, 21 years old. They're over the age of majority. But I've got three boys. Fortunately, all my boys are happy and healthy right now. But the last thing I would do if one of them appeared to have mental health issues is help buy them guns. Why is no one almost out there at all discussing parental responsibilities when it comes to the violent acts of children? And I know a lot of people out there who engage in acts of violence don't have a dad or a father figure at home. And that certainly is a big part of why violence is as high, in my opinion, as it is in the United States. We have a crisis of masculinity. We have a crisis of fatherhood. We have a crisis of men in this country. Almost everyone committing an act of violence in this country is male. The vast majority of them are between the ages of 16 and 40. Relatively young men, even younger, 16 and 30, 16 and 35. So many men in this country are desperate for father figures. But I look at some of these mass shooters of late, and many of them had dads and moms at home. Why did the parents do such a bad job? And what can we do to help send the message that if your kid is mentally unstable, if, as in the case of Highland Park, you had called the police on your kid? Think about that for a minute. I hope I never, ever have to do this. But a relatively small percentage of American parents are ever compelled to call the police because of threats from their own child. But if you had had to do that, how in the world would you have ever aided and abetted or facilitated your child in getting guns? You can believe in the Second Amendment. You can believe in individual responsibility and simultaneously believe that parenting is important and that parents have to help do whatever they can to not only protect their own kids, but sometimes protect other people from their own kids. And I just haven't seen this be discussed other than on the Clay and Buck show where I talked about it some 
earlier this week in reacting to the Highland Park shooting. Parents are the first line of defense when it comes to their kids misbehaving. we got to talk more about parental responsibility and dads and granddads and uncles and older brothers. we got to talk more about the crisis of masculinity that exists in this country right now. Men are failing at raising as a group we are failing men are at raising healthy young men because it is almost exclusively young men who are spiraling out of control in this country and I think there are a lot of reasons why but I'm a big believer before you go crying for the government to get involved before you go demanding that the police get involved police your own house men Do the best job of fatherhood that you can do. And a big part of that is not letting young, violent kids who are threatening to kill your own family and threatening to kill themselves have access to firearms. Before the government gets involved, before the police get involved, let's get parents involved. Let's do our jobs, particularly Dads, granddads, uncles, older brothers, everybody out there. We have a responsibility. We've got to do better. A couple of other stories. Speaking of doing better, Brett Kavanaugh, Supreme Court Justice, went out to dinner in Washington, D.C. at Morton's. Now, big fan of steakhouses. I like the Morton steak. Uh, I'm uh, in Nashville. I'm just going to give out some steakhouse recommendations. None of these places pay me. Uh, I love bourbon steak. I love cane prime. I love Jeff Ruby. Uh, I'm If you want like a really big chain, I just ate at Morton's recently. I like Morton's. Also a fan, uh, certainly, of a huge Fleming's. I'm a big fan. We, we're fortunate here in Nashville to have a ton of great steakhouses, okay? I love them. Just went to Keene Steakhouse with Buck up in uh, New York City. Um, I, I, I feel very fortunate that we get to go uh, and that I get to sit down and order steak when I want to, all right? Um, I got to tell you, the idea that we are making it seem normal for protesters to be standing outside in a Washington, D.C. street chanting and disrupting the ability of a Supreme Court justice to actually eat dinner is crazy to me that we have reached this point. Now, I want to read you the details here uh, from, this, uh, from this story, and I'm reading from Daniel Lipman, uh, who shared this. Justice Brett Kavanaugh had to exit through the rear of Morton's on Wednesday night after D.C. protesters showed up out front. Uh, they just asked Corinne Jean-Pierre about this, the Biden spokesperson in the White House, And she refused to condemn it. And the marshals in the Supreme Court, remember they just tried to kill Brett Kavanaugh not very long ago. Just a couple of weeks ago, there was an assassination attempt. A guy showed up armed at his home, a left winger who wanted to kill him. So Roe v. Wade didn't uh, get overturned. I got to give credit to Morton's here. And I'm going to talk more about Kavanaugh in a moment and what was said in Montgomery County, which is crazy because the Supreme Court... Uh, Marshall is asking for Maryland and Virginia officials to protect Supreme Court justices. Uh, but this is, uh, this is from Morton's, and I give him credit for this statement. Honorable Supreme Court Justice Kavanaugh and all of our other patrons at the restaurant were unduly harassed by unruly protesters while eating dinner at our Morton's restaurant. Politics, regardless of your side or views, should not trample the freedom at play of the right to congregate and eat dinner. There's a time and place for everything. Disturbing the dinner of all of our customers was an act of selfishness and void of decency. Bravo, Mortens. I agree with everything that you said in that statement, and I can't fathom that we have reached the era and the level where people are being harassed 
in their day-to-day existence where they can't even eat in a restaurant, where they can't go home to their house without protesters chanting expletives outside. I don't care whether you're a Republican, whether you're a Democrat, whether you're an independent. I don't believe that people should be showing up outside of your homes protesting. And it's also illegal, in particular, outside of your home. In fact, the marshal of the Supreme Court asked Montgomery County Executive Mark Elrich to enforce a local law against picketing private homes. Uh, On Wednesday, Elrich said that this was playing politics. And he even said that he believes theater, maybe a little bit of a response to the fact we reacted pretty negatively to what the court decision was. He said uh, that I think all you've got to do is look at Russia and get an idea of where you don't want to go. This idea where people can't gather together, and if you gather together, you're going to be arrested and taken, that's not happening here. And we need to make sure people don't use protests as an excuse for silencing opposition. No, 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 no. Look, I'm a First Amendment absolutist. I got banned by CNN for saying I believe in the First Amendment and boobs. You don't have a right to show up outside of a private residence and intimidate someone who is trying to live their life inside, especially someone, God forbid, who's got young kids. And need I remind Montgomery County, Maryland, there was just an assassination attempt made on Brett Kavanaugh's life. We have to end this idea that it's normal to protest outside of people's homes. We have to end this idea that it's normal to protest outside of a restaurant where somebody you disagree with politically is having dinner. We have to make it clear unilaterally in a content-neutral way, whether you are a Republican, whether you are a Democrat, this is flat-out unacceptable, period. Hey, Clay Travis right here. Outkick the show is dominating. We'll continue to roll. More coming back in a moment, but first this. Speaking of unacceptable, Megan Rapino. I'm going to talk about Megan Rapino in a minute, but did you see Macy Gray go on Pierce Morgan's show recently and say that people couldn't just decide to become a woman, that you can't just change your gender and that become a biological reality? Biology is real. Let me show you my shirt. You can go buy them at Outkick. Biology is real. Okay, I can't believe that in 2022, I've got to wear a Biology is Real t-shirt. And some people are going to be like, oh my God, Clay Travis wore a Biology is Real uh, t-shirt. He's anti-trans. No, look, if it makes you happier and you're a dude to decide that you want to be a, a, a chick, more power to you. If you're a chick and it makes you happier as an adult to decide that you want to be a dude, I, I, more power to you. You can do whatever makes you happy. All I would point out is that Macy Gray said that. The criticism was so severe that she walked it back and basically said, you can be whatever gender you want to be. She wasn't even willing to say biology is real. This, by the way, party of science. Remember when the Democrats were the party of science? Now they're the party of you can be whatever gender you want. But here's what's going to blow your mind. And if you really want to blow these crazy transgender activists' minds. Say, just ask a simple question. If you can pick your gender and you have to be respected and called that gender and it is your right to suddenly want to be a dude instead of being a woman or a woman instead of a dude, why can't you change your gender? Like if I decided, hey, I am... Sorry, why can't you change your race? If I decided hey, I am a Filipino man living in a white man's body. Why is it unacceptable for me to change my race but heroic for me to change my gender? After all, if you were going to decide to switch one or the other, it seems far easier to change your gender sorry, change your race than it is to change your gender. 
I have, I think, a lot more in common as a white guy with black guys, Hispanic guys, and Asian guys just based off being a dude. I have more in common with them, I think, than I do with a white woman just because I happen to be a white guy. In other words, if you had to pick, gender, to me, seems to be more significant than race. Because after all, many of us are made up of a variety of different races. Yet it is racist. Remember Rachel Dolezal? Rachel Dolezal was working in the NAACP up in Washington State. Turned out she was just a white chick. And everybody was furious at her. The idea that she would feel like she was black. Sean King's made an entire career out of it. Changing your race is racist and unacceptable and you should be canceled if you do it. But changing your gender, totally acceptable and heroic. Just wonder how that ever came to be. Since changing your race seems far less significant than changing your gender. Speaking of gender issues, Megan Rapino recently came out and said that she thought people just need to get over it if someone is transgender and wants to play high school sports. She actually said, your daughter's sport just isn't that important. Now, that's an intriguing position to take because it implicitly acknowledges that biological men who decide to identify as women have a huge competitive advantage. Something that I would think someone like Megan Rapino would know since the U.S. women's soccer team was beaten by 15-year-old boys in Dallas, Texas, a 15-U boys team crushed the U.S. women's soccer team. Men are better athletes than women. And it's not particularly close, such that even young adolescent boys are better than fully grown women soccer players who are the best soccer players in the world. Megan Rapinoe got the Presidential Medal of Freedom from Joe Biden despite the fact that she said high school sports don't matter for girls, transgender rights matter more. That's what she said. That's her argument. She's entitled to it. I think she's 100% wrong. All of you, and I'm writing this in my most recent book that I'm working on now, all of you are going to have to make a similar choice. Do you believe that men and women, athletics shouldn't be separated, and whatever gender you decide to identify as, you should be able to compete? Or do you believe in women's athletics? You can't believe in both. Everybody's going to have to make a choice. Megan Rapinoe, Presidential Medal of Freedom, Medal of Honor winner, Medal of Freedom. Uh, She believes that that is uh, that the gender, not a big deal. High school boys should be able to play against anybody they want to play against. Speaking of crazy, um, I saw this from NPR. Brittany Griner, of course, still in Russia, not able to get back. Uh, she pled guilty, faces up to 10 years in prison. NPR covered this by saying that I'm reading directly from their tweet. The highest WNBA salary is about $228,000 a year. In the NBA, over $45 million. That stark pay in equity has pushed many WNBA players to play overseas where they can earn more. It's not inequity, all right? Inequity. The reason why men make more than women is because way more people want to watch men play basketball than want to watch women play basketball. But, Got a fun question for you. What would happen if the WNBA and the NBA salaries all got equalized? Because after all, guys, girls, they're just playing basketball. How quickly do you think NBA stars would become Republicans if suddenly men NBA players and women WNBA players had to earn the same amounts of money because after all, they're just doing the same job. They're playing basketball. How quickly do you think highly paid NBA players would say, wait a minute, 
I'm all for equality. I'm all for equity. But people actually watch what we do. They don't watch the girls. Why should they get the same money that we do? It's an interesting question. And that is what the left wing in this country is starting to argue. You just saw NPR. Why is Brittany Griner only making $228,000 a year when some NBA players are making $45 million a year? Well, it's economics. Because people watch the NBA. They don't watch the WNBA. But that doesn't matter. Left-wingers in this country don't believe in capitalism. They think everybody should make the same. That's what communists believe. I would love to see how quickly and how capitalistic all these NBA players would become Republicans if they actually tried to make this a reality. Just worth paying attention to because that's what NPR is implicitly arguing, basically directly. Uh, Congratulations, University of Oregon. There's been a lot of questions about what's the future of the Pac-12 now that USC and UCLA are moving to the Big Ten. And in particular, the best available quarterback still on the market from Detroit, my wife's home region. She lived in Oakland County. We got married in Oakland County. But I love Michigan, especially northern Michigan. I'm going up there at the end of the month. Uh, on vacation with my family. Dante Moore made the decision from Detroit, five-star quarterback, to pick Oregon over his hometown Michigan Wolverines. It's a huge win for Dan Lanning and Oregon. We don't know even what conference necessarily Oregon is going to be in going forward, but Jim Harbaugh, who really, let's be honest, has not, for all the years he's been at Michigan, had a truly elite quarterback to coach. That was his calling card when he got to Michigan was, well, he'll be able to find a really good quarterback. Dante Moore gave the Heisman to the University of Michigan and is going halfway across the country to the University of Oregon. Pac-12, now Pac-10, gets a big win over the Big Ten. Dante Moore leaving uh, the state of Michigan to go all the way to Oregon. That's a big win for the reputational aspects associated with Oregon football right now. A couple of good news uh, stories here, or a good news story. Roger Goodell told CNBC today that the NFL Sunday ticket is finally going to move entirely to streaming, that you will no longer need a direct TV subscription in order to get the NFL Sunday ticket. And I have to say in response to this, hallelujah. Do you know how many people out there, myself included, have been super frustrated to be living outside of the region or traveling outside of the region of your favorite team and not be able to just pick up your phone or your iPad or where your laptop, however you stream when you're out of market, and not be able to just watch your favorite NFL team. It is infuriating that the NFL Sunday ticket has had that exclusive rights for as long as they have, and that you have to have an NFL Sunday ticket package. You have to have a DirecTV account, or you have to go out to some sports bar, and if you're a Titans fan like I am, The Titans game is never on. You can never hear the audio. I am ecstatic that Roger Goodell announced today this is moving off of DirecTV exclusivity and will be available. We still don't know. Maybe it's going to be Apple. Maybe it's going to be Amazon. Maybe it's going to be some combination of each that you will soon be able to choose your NFL Sunday ticket option. Hopefully, wherever you are in the country or around the world, you'll be able to watch your favored NFL game. And I know some of you are going to respond, well, I just watch Red Zone, or I just watch uh, the, uh, the whatever streaming service you have that's the equivalent of Red Zone. Yeah, I get it, but I want to watch every snap of my favorite team play so when the Titans break my heart, I'm able to see it happen in real time. Finally, Joe Biden spoke earlier today. And it's embarrassing. I don't know if we can intermix for the clip 
going forward Joe Biden's gaffes. He had three or four really bad ones today in his speech. In particular, he read inside of his speech, repeat the line, which was a clear instruction to him that he was supposed to repeat the line in front of him, not repeat the line as in the instructions. But Joe Biden has gone full Ron Burgundy. I said earlier, I'm not a medical expert, but I can recognize when someone is on a rapid decline and Joe Biden is not well. There is a strong issue with Joe Biden, in my opinion, based on all the video that I see, with his communication skills, with how detailed the instructions have to be in order for him to do his job. And he's only going to continue to accelerate and get worse over the next 30 months, in theory, of his tenure as president. I don't know how we're going to be able to finish Biden's tenure. And I certainly am not in favor of any president dealing with the cognitive issues that he has regardless of party because it makes America weaker. China, Russia, whoever, North Korea, Iran, whoever our adversaries are, whoever our enemies are, they are going to take advantage of the decrepit nature of our president. And right now, Joe Biden can't even read a teleprompter. Can agree or disagree with a large variety of things that I say on a day-to-day basis. I just went over 30 minutes with about 20 words written on a notepad in front of me. Joe Biden couldn't do this. Joe Biden right now could not sit down in front of you like this and give you totally unscripted 30-some-odd minutes of opinions. I don't think he could do it. Certainly couldn't do the three-hour radio show that Buck and I do every day. It's a disappointment. It's sad. It's unfortunate. But this is where we are as we continue in the Biden regime. I appreciate all of you. My name is Clay Travis, DBAP, unless you need to SBAP. Happy birthday one more time to my wife. Can't wait to watch the end of Stranger Things. This has been Outkick the Show. I will see you guys on Monday. Have fabulous weekends.